Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is the second part of the tutorial series. If you are new to this and if you have no idea what uh, this all is, um, this is the second video of my tutorial series about Hexagon, which is a 3D uh, mesh design software, so to speak, so you can make your own 3D models in this. And if everything you see here is overwhelming right now, then I suggest you can watch the first installment of the series, which uh, covers most of the, or if, yeah, most if not all of the uh, UI that you see here. Uh, for everyone who's um, who has been with me from the first one, uh, you can see that I try to cancel out some stuff of the UI. Um, I'm trying to basically have this stuff not visible until we need it. So um, expect this uh, stuff on the left of the monitor um, um, of the video to not be accessed until a few episodes in. Um, next time I will maybe take more time and cover this up better. Um, yeah, today we are going into very simple things. We are going to make some objects. Last time I just did this very, very quickly and I know this was probably confusing and I'm going to do this very slowly. We're just going to work with shaping these objects for the beginning and we're going to put together two things a chair and a table. Um, why two things? I want to show you two different approaches. So for the first one we will just use multiple of these uh, basic objects and put them together in a vague shape that is made up of multiple pieces and then we will use one simple tool to group them all together. And for the second one, we will I will show you two different additional tools. Um, one tool is to divide the object into smaller pieces. And the other one is to actually shape the object. And I will show you both of these in detail in the second part. We're already three minutes in, so let's start. Uh, the first thing is I have with, with the F one to f5 uh, keys you can quickly change between um what what kind of visual you have if f1 you have the whole object selected with f2 you have the you can select single faces on an object let me scroll in to show you with f3 you can select the edges yeah edge selection tool with F4 you can select dots and F5 is something I never use but you have basically the option to switch between the selection tools and then it selects the tool you want. But you cannot uh, select a different thing from this on. So it's just a greater selection tool if you want so. For the beginning I will hit F1, have the select object tool ready and I will select an object. I can do this in two ways. I can click on it in the viewport. And if I press delete, it gets deleted. I use the delete key. You can see the key I use in the upper right corner. Let me show you here. Uh, someone in one of my earlier videos, uh, much earlier videos, suggested I add this space. Um, this shows you what key I lastly used. Also which tool I lastly used. It shows you the tool or the key if one key is uh, connected to this. Okay. The other option is to select the object. No, wait, the other, the other option is to go into the scene tree and select the object by clicking on the name. And you can uh, you have a menu with right click, but this doesn't help us right now. So to select something, you hit the delete key. Okay. 
everything is deleted. Now we are going to start with the chair. If you have any tool selected and you don't want the tool, press the escape key. As you can see in the upper corner, it aborts the key. So if, for example, I want a cube, but I hit the sphere key, say, oh wait, this is a sphere, I didn't want this. Press escape and it gets deselected, aborted. Okay, so to create an object, we use the primitive tabs. Yeah, there, there's different tabs and we only need three today. We start with the primitives tab. Click on the cube and now you see that your um, cursor has changed a bit differently and that something is happening in the properties uh, tab. You have two options to make your model. You can say, okay, I want to go from the center of the object. Then you can see that it drags the um, that it makes the uh, size of the cube from the center. So basically where I click is the center and then is, if I drag, it gets bigger and smaller. The alternative is that I choose a corner and it go, uh, works from there. It's both equally for us today. Yeah, and also it shows us the radius. In this case, it shows us the radius in all three uh, coordinates and all three uh, ways. Um, and since it's a cube, it's going to be the same for everything. So choose any size because we will change this. Okay. Now what happened in the properties uh, tab? We're looking at this up here. Okay. Let me, let me redraw this a bit better. This is a bit better. Okay, so it gives us the name of the object and we can freely change this. So, um, I call this sitting space, um, where your butt will be placed when this would be a chair. Symmetry. Later. Smoothing. Later. It gives us the number of points on our object, the number of edges and the number of faces on our object so we have basically always an overview of how complex is the object we're having to work with we have a position this position is in relation to the coordinate system but it is absolute so as you can see in the front view if i set this to a position of zero on the red space yeah the red coordinates are aligned with the red um, arrow, green with the green arrow and blue with the blue arrow. If for example, I take the red position, type in zero and press enter or accept, you can press accept or enter, both work in this case. No, you have to press enter and then accept. It resets this to the zero position in the coordinate system. If you want to know where the absolute zero is, it is right there in the absolute center of the floor. Okay. It has no rotation. If I rotate this, you can see the numbers go up. And it has a size. You can also change the size here manually with uh, changing the uh, numbers. I will show this in a minute. In a minute, you have a manipulator. I uh, don't really use this. Um, I have no idea what this is for. Actually, uh, I have never used this before. Um, I mean, we can play around with it later, but uh, for now we don't need it. So chair, chair has a sitting uh, area, it had, it had four legs and it has uh, something to lean against. We're going to build that with a few cubes. So we're going into the object manipulation. 
I talked about the uh, tools here. Translate manipulator is to just move the object. Rotate is to just rotate it. And scale is what we need today to scale it. If I, if I click on the green button and then I move the mouse, I can move this, I can, I can change the uh, space and if I click again, I release the green button. What you can also do is click on and hold the mouse, pull or push or move your mouse and then release the mouse and you have it just like uh, uh, just really short. So you can change all three dimensions of this just by basically dragging the, uh, the, the cube, the little colored cube, or you can change all three by grabbing the middle one and dragging it. You can also just click on it and then move your mouse. Uh, this takes a bit of uh, training, I guess, to, to know which direction does what, um, but you'll figure this out. Just do it slowly. Okay, going back to Translate Manipulator, moving this down a bit. Uh, in the other video, I also explained how to move in these spaces, so um, yeah. Scale. Let's scale this a bit down. Okay. Also, sometimes you don't see the manipulation. So you, you, get, you grab your object, but you have no manipulation. You have this height manipulator thing. And if you hit space, um, your manipulators are gone. They're just not there. Uh, they're hidden. So uh, if you press space again, there's, they're coming back again. If your manipulators are gone, if, if you don't find your, your manipulation tools, uh, just try... Uh, space a few times and they should be there okay I usually use the universal manipulator which gives me all three kinds of manipulation in one I have to be a bit careful about when I touch what or what I do but uh, in generally it's just faster than clicking on the single manipulation tools okay we have a sitting area we need four legs let me create another cube like this and you can see that um, usually using the perspective view to create an object is not the best idea because it creates the object somewhere the 2d interface thinks your 3d uh, mind tries to place objects so um, this is why we use multiple panels in that case I basically use the front view and say okay I want this up here and I need the right to say, okay, I want this in the front. Okay. Now we have a leg, it's a bit short. So we use the, uh, again, the scale manipulation. Uh, click, drag. And if you say, I'm not satisfied, this should be longer. You can say, click, drag again. Uh, just do this how you feel. This is uh, this this um, this chair is something we will probably work with in the future um, for other stuff. But um, don't get into too much detail today. Okay. Also, if this clips, it's it's okay. Yeah, for the first time, this this will clip. It will always clip. There's always some clipping involved. Also, I will. Um, Go back to the properties and name this lag. Except so, uh, usually except is a good idea to hit after you do any changes in the properties tab because it just better be safe and get it updated than not. And um, you will see me click on accept a lot just um, on autopilot because I am so used to doing this. Okay, so I'm selecting my lag this time from the scene tree. Now you can go to edit and copy and you can go to edit and paste and you have another leg in your scene tree. Why don't we see this in the 
perspective here in the in the uh, um, viewport because it's on the very same space. They are overlapping perfectly. What we do now, we go into the front view, we grab our little arrow, and we pull this all the way over to the other side. And now we have two legs, but we need four. So, to alternate, I have nothing selected. With escape, you can also deselect whatever your current selection is. Escape is your friend to deselect and just do anything. Also, if you have nothing selected and press escape, nothing happens. So it's safe. Escape is a very, uh, the escape key is a very safe thing for you to use. Okay, we want to select multiple objects. Way number one, if you use the right mouse button, if you use the left mouse button, nothing happens. You can drag this and nothing happens except it tries to select the nearest object on your mouse, as you can see. If you click the left mouse button, hold and pull, you get this red rectangle and everything and this is important. Everything that is completely within the red rectangle is getting selected. Okay, we're just doing the uh, the chair uh, the chair today because we're already at sixty minutes. I'm sorry. So I have both legs completely in the selection, but not the top. And both legs are selected. We're hitting Control Z. To copy, you can see this in the upper corner. Control V to paste. Now we have four legs, also in our scene tree, which is important. And we're going to pull these all the way back. And now we have two objects selected. And you can see you have still your manipulators. You can move both at the same time. I just showed you this. You can also. Uh, rotate both at the same time and you can also uh, scale both at the same time so we're scaling these up okay this is a bit much we're scaling both up we're moving both up until we have around the same height at the others hopefully okay and now we have at least part of the uh, back of the chair. We're going to put in a bit more so that we are actually something to lean on and then we're done for today. This is really... No, we are almost done for today. My bad. Okay. Escape to deselect everything. We have sitting space. We have four legs. We need another cube. Okay. We... Grab. This time we don't grab one of the arrows, we grab this little uh, triangle thing between the green and the blue arrow. Uh, let me emphasize this one. Okay. Wait, I need to grab this one. Okay, because now I can translate my object camera in two different dimensions but not in the third one as you can see here yeah in front view it just goes up and down in the other it goes um, forward and back and up and down okay we're going to place this in between our uh, legs we're going to use the scale button to make this thinner so and since since we know the uh, the chair is in the zero position, we can just give this the zero position as well, and we have now put it in the center of the chair. So if you work in this, yeah, use zero position as much as you can. It will help you greatly. Now we're going to scale this to the sides. We're going to control V up here. Control V up here, move this down, and now we have a chair, but it's a lot of pieces for a chair. We want to move this chair as one object. 
So what we're going to do is going to utilities. Don't be afraid. It's a lot of stuff. We only need one. This one, the chain. We want the chain. We're grabbing everything. And now let me show you a different thing. You can not, you, you can't, yeah, you can, you can move these in the scene tree if you want, but you can't put them under each other. Like, uh, you can't, you can't, you can't create a hierarchy here with, with pulling. What you can do is click on one, hold control, click on the others until you have everything selected. And now we're going to use this one. It's called group keychain and now what did it do it created a group with all the pieces inside and if I click on the group it has group name it has a position it has everything the same it has the same uh, uh, properties basically as the chair but with different values in it yeah it has more points more edges and more faces and we're going to name this chair and now if I move this, I can move the whole chair. Huh? We're moving the whole chair here, the whole chair experience. But we can still click on parts of this, for example, the bows, the, the hind legs, and say, hey, they are too, too low, so we can move them separately. So it all depends on what you're selecting. You can still move single parts if you select them. You can also select everything if you click on the name of the group. It also has this handy little triangle so you can basically say, okay, I'm done with the chair. I don't need to know the details. I just have a chair. And you still have the whole chair. Okay. I know I wanted to do two things, but we're already at 22 minutes. I took way too long. Next time, um, sometime this week, we're going to do a, um, a table and we're going to grab two tools from the Vertex modeling. I hope this helps you and see you guys around.